This summit has been a great success. We have displayed unity of the kind which has been the shield to the freedom and justice which we all enjoy. In the end, it was apparently sweetness and light. President Reagan and Mrs. Thatcher sitting by a log fire, having secured their desired communique, reaffirming NATO unity. You like the communique? Are you satisfied with the communique? We saw it last night. Oh, no problem. That's very good. Yes, very good. No problem. Despite his uncertainty, Mr. Reagan was in fact leaving with a five page document clarifying the way ahead for American and NATO arms negotiations with Moscow. From our meetings here, our commitment is to move forward to meet our defense requirements while continuing discussions on our four-part agenda with the new Soviet leadership. Mrs. Thatcher, who pushed for this summit, pronounced herself highly satisfied. We have displayed unity of the kind which has been the shield to the freedom and justice which we all enjoy. And this summit has been a great success in re-establishing, reaffirming that unity. Only history will show whether the 16 nations did really achieve unity here, or whether cracks were diplomatically papered over on what to Mrs. Thatcher is the key issue, NATO's modernization of aging nuclear artillery, nuclear-capable aircraft, and short-range battlefield nuclear missiles. After Mrs. Thatcher came here just two weeks ago and called for what she repeatedly referred to as modernization, many analysts today saw the wording of the communique continue to be kept up to date when necessary as very much a second best compromise, open to acrimonious reinterpretation by some allies when nuclear modernization decisions eventually have to be taken. I think that there were some countries that felt that if you use the term modernization, it means something which actually none of us mean it to mean. What we're talking about is keeping nuclear deterrence up to date where and when it's necessary. And I think that the phrase which we have used in this declaration actually expresses very clearly what every single member of the Alliance believes and thinks to be necessary. But after officials and ministers had haggled over the precise meaning of modernization and up-to-date, Mrs. Thatcher said there really were no differences in interpretations, particularly between English and German. Well, everyone was agreed that to deter, you have in fact to modernize. Incidentally, I understand there's no difference well, between modernization and up-to-date in German. They're both the same word. So it, it uh, is that correct? So I'm told. So it doesn't matter we say modernize or up-to-date. I use the word up-to-date. But everyone accepts the need to modernize. The important thing is to have a sure defense and you take whatever steps are necessary to that end. This is what this communique says. And don't underestimate it. For his part, West German Chancellor Kohl was happy with the communique. It had not saddled him with being seen to agree to the political liability of modernizing nuclear weapons. Indeed, he wondered what all the fuss had been about. So I asked NATO Secretary General Lord Carrington whether there really had been a unity problem in the first place. Well, I think there was a lack of clarity about what people were talking about. And I think that there was a sort of, yes, I mean, I think it was necessary to have this meeting to clear up misconceptions on both sides. And I think that particularly on the modernization of nuclear weapons, it really did clear it up. And I think the alliance is united as a, as a result of it. When you look at this debate over modernization, has it really been nothing more than a quibbling over words? Because, in essence, the principle is agreed. Yes, but uh, I, mean, I think it was a, a, a storm in a teacup in a sense, but I think it had become quite um, a serious storm in a teacup because people were talking about different things. They were talking past each other and meaning different things by what they were saying. And I think what has been really useful is that the Alliance is saying, look, we believe that a nuclear deterrent and a conventional deterrent are what is preventing war, and that that is, and, and because of that, it's necessary to keep them up to date, and we will keep them up to date where and when necessary.
In this declaration from today and the declaration on conventional weapons yesterday, do you believe that that'll make Mr. Gorbachev quake in his boots and say, yes, I must take NATO seriously and I must begin to reduce the conventional weapons I have asymmetrically? No, I hope what, what, what it will make him think is that the, that the Alliance is prepared to negotiate seriously and sensibly about all these matters, but not to do so from a position of weakness. There's no possibility of clearing the planet of nuclear weapons by the year 2000, nor in the end at all. Because, after all, two world wars have shown us that conventional weapons are not enough to deter war. And if we want a war-free Europe, then we must continue to have a nuclear deterrent. If you're to deter war, if you're to have an effective alliance, you don't do it with obsolete weapons. Therefore, you have to modernize. That is not in doubt. They all believe it. Some of them are really rather shy in saying it as openly as we are. It's not in the declaration in quite the way that you've been putting it, though, Prime Minister. It, it does not use the word modernize, and it actually uses this phrase, uh, keep up to date where necessary, which surely is open to all sorts of interpretations. Of course it isn't. But you're splitting hairs. This is ridiculous. These weapons will continue to be kept up to date because the whole policy of the Alliance is a sure defence, deterrence sufficient to deter any aggressor. Do you understand the misgivings that the Germans express about being left as the only obvious battlefield in which these modernised battlefield nuclear weapons might be used? If you're on the front line, then if they cross that front line, of course you would be the first victim unless you won every battle. So it's bad luck being be. German in a sense. No, no, no. Look, look at history. You can't deny history. You can't deny that it was Hitler that created the last world war and who had to be defeated. And the German freedom started the day the West won. They know that. That is their geography, that is their history, they are on the front line, and the greater their resolve to deter, the greater the certainty of their peace will be. President Reagan's people believe he now has the united NATO endorsement he had sought to take with him to the next superpower summit in Moscow. Invigorated by the departure crowd, he was in fine fettle as he left. I'm going to issue an executive order. I'm going to get in the airplane and you get out of here and get out of this nasty weather before you catch cold. Whatever the negative concerns, NATO leaders here were buoyed today by President Reagan's ringing endorsement of the alliance made behind closed doors and his restatement of America's continued commitment to it.